Uh, let's see. Thank, okay. thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, so we are recording. Uh, welcome to the Kios Value Working Group meeting. June 17. Uh, yes. So uh, Stephen has shared a new link on researcher reputation, like proposed metrics. Hello, Georg and Kevin. Oh. Oh. So Stephen, can you share what this is about? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> the National Academies um, are kind of big guns in um, in academia. There used to be these old TV commercials uh, for, I can't remember, it was Merrill Lynch, one of the other financial groups, right? Where their cocktail parties or their, their dinners out or whatever. And, and there's lots of talking and bustle in the background. And one guy leans over to somebody else and says, why? Broker is Merrill Lynch, and Merrill Lynch says, and the whole room goes quiet, and everybody like it's going like this. That's the, it's kind of like the National Academies in academia. Right? It's like they speak, and people go, hmm. That is an so, old school reference, by the way. Yes, I know. I know, but it still works, right? <laughs> I, I refrain from adding a YouTube link to the old commercial. Um, so, uh, you know, try not to take us too far down the road. But yeah, there's specific call outs um, to that, to, to the stuff that we are trying to figure out with, with academic value. We need to find the new link. Um, so this is, <clears throat> the, the invitation letter is for university presidents and provosts to designate someone to go to the a meeting to create the beginning of a cohort of colleges and universities to advance open scholarship practices. Um, and so as part of that, in the letter itself, there's talk here, this bullet review and update university open scholarship policies to harmonize with blah, blah, blah. Um, so there's some kind of relationship there <clears throat> and services and training toward fair principles of research, but especially track progress toward open scholarship while ensuring that new scholarship standards and policies set by research sponsors are satisfied. So that's just the body of the letter. And then this two page document that there's a link to in the middle of it, there's a guide to supporting open scholarship for presidents and provosts. Um, has again, call outs to policy work about reviewing how tenure and promotion work, valuing diverse types of research projects, metrics that incentivize the open dissemination of articles, data and other research outputs and valuing collaborative research. Um, so there, this is interesting because looking at the two page letter, that PDF, one of the things that on the, let me see if I can share my screen. Um, so down in here, services and training. Yep. So a lot of this, a lot of these are like, here are the things that you should do they don't really give much guidance <laughs> as to how to do them. <laughs> um, and metrics could perhaps start drawing some of that out. Um, we are already talking with the fair for RS folks. So okay. on, do you know Dan Katz at Illinois? I know the name. Okay. Um, and then Michelle Barker, who's, she's down in Australia. So, and, and <clears throat> Mike and our current full stack person that's been devoted to this, Emmy, are making some real progress in 
bouncing around between OSF and Percival and Grimoire and that kind of stuff. They have some specific technical questions. Mike was going to see if he could try to drop in today, but he might also reach out to Sean or somebody just to ask who they should talk to. And there are some things the API doesn't expose that they'd like it to. Um, but some of this stuff is like probably not softwareable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so like, I don't know, even if I look above like policies, academic hiring, tenure and review and promotion, like this whole, this whole thing. <laughs> I mean, we've been down this road before, right? Like in terms of an RPT process. Yeah, well, I, I think there's a lot more activity around this. Did I, did I put that? I think it was a Harvard Law thing on, on how software is scholarship. Did I put that in here at any point? Not sure. Um, I wasn't here two weeks ago. So maybe if you did. I'm trying to find it now. It's, I mean, is, is, Stephen, are you thinking like how the work we're doing here could supplement this document? Because I would see kind of the list of things that are in that two pager as being potential high level candidates for kind of further definition? Um, I think it's that universities are gonna be looking to things to do this. Right, so like, um, if I just picked like a highest level thing, like financing open scholarship, right? Like what would be the ways that we could, are you thinking what are the ways that chaos could help kind of define what metrics would be around how we determine financial support for like where to look, you know what I mean? Like, do you have a grant program for, for providing open access? Do you have a, what's that, uh, what's that thing we have here at UNO, Georg or Vinod, the open digital commons thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah some of it'll be that kind of, I mean, I think all of that are pieces. I think it's also um, looking at this merger between the kinds of things that chaos does and um, the OSF, the open science format, the open science platform that's Center for Open Science. It's like, what, what's the then? What could they do independently or together to kind of support some of this stuff? Um, Here's that software scholarship thing from MIT. It's just from last year. Provides the first systematic account and justification of software applications as work of scholarship. And then the other thing I found recently is this thing. So, you know, the question is always, how do we get beyond just the raw metrics of downloads, right? So what do we do? We know that LS Insights is, is tracking your attendance at their conference, right? Or your presentations on your stuff at their conferences and what conferences you've attended or what have you. And we're gonna to try to make that a model for other things. Um, I, I think the real, the real impact of the nascent stuff is around open science, 
there have been journal articles and research studies that says, you know, most professors think this is a good idea, but most of them don't actually follow the practices, right? Well, they don't follow the practices because they're not trained. Um, it's more work. There is no support for it, right? I'm going to do all this work to be open, and yet all the university cares about is the journal article anyway, so why am I bothering? Right, so what this nascent piece does is I think turn the heat up on that to make the universe, the universities try to better value the open work that faculty are doing so they'll do more of it. Okay, so the, the path that I'm kind of seeing is that chaos is a project is focused on trying to improve transparency on community health, right? And value is one of those. Um, and so the intersection as faculty members are producing software artifacts, like how do we ascribe um, academic value in, in that software work? And so what would be the metrics that we would need to develop to help people administrators really <laughs> people that aren't the ac the academic themselves well it, it ends up it ends up being the academic themselves because as as the tide moves this way the the academic has to defend it right? sure we won't it's, it's not just the admins defining it it's the faculty members here's how you have to pitch right this is why this is important this, here's here's my community around my research right right and so if chaos can help that pitch by saying here are here are actually published metrics in right. these so like the way that the the MIT article it was MIT right that you shared like that helps the pitch right you're like listen MIT is arguing <laughs> right. we care about this and the most and that even that health policy thing helps. Yeah, right. Um, so, and then if we can publish metrics, it really says, here are the here are the things that kind of make my case, and here are the things that we can actually look at. <laughs> like, but but part of it is also trying to understand how the non-software people are different. So, right? like how the non-software people are what are, are different, right. right? So my. My, my summer student staff or Emmy is looking at OSF and she says, and she was trying to set up Grimoire and Percival again. So we're trying to get more and more of those two platforms to talk to each other, share data. And she said, sorry, they said, um, there's no forks on any of these repositories. You want me to follow forks? Want me to make a dashboard item for books? And I said, yes, because first of all, you're only looking at the RIT people. You're not looking at everybody. Secondarily, there's value in here is this open science platform where you can share a lot of stuff. One of the things you can share is your software, but there's also these other artifacts of your research. Um, but it turns out members of OSF or members of the Center for Open Science aren't actually forking each other's work. Why not, right? Is it, is it that you replicate? So you just download it and copy it. You don't really fork off of it. Is it that you don't know that you can fork and make your own thing and upload a variation? Is it, you know, is it part of the practice, not part of the practice? Is it ignorant or why, right? The, the OSF platform will pull in stuff as will the chaos platform from your GitHub stuff, the software, why is nobody forking? What's, what's, the, what's the science equivalent metric of a fork and how do you track it, right? How do we find a way to say, well, yes, people are actually replicating my work, but it doesn't, the way to show, make that show up is through Aside from the journal article sites, there are also these other ways in which the fact that people are using my stuff shows up and what are they? So listening to you talk, I jotted a note down that like maybe from a chaos perspective, 
like something like downloads or forks or like number of closed issues, like kind of these repository e things, right? Are too granular of a metric, and I dropped a totally random metric in there that's called like repository software activity. And it could be measured in a variety of different ways. Like to your point, like forks, as you know, forks may or may not be a good measure depending kind of on the context. Downloads may or may not be a good measure kind of again, depending on the context. Right. Um, issues, right? Issues may, may or may not be a good measure because somebody may be using Bugzilla <laughs> and you, you have zero in a repository management perspective, like just on GitHub. So, you know, maybe from an academic perspective, just to start, like just to kind of like break the ice on this, it's something like repository software activity. And another metric is something like, um, you know, software citations. You know, like, uh, are people, um, it's like I'm thinking of like the James Howis and stuff, cite as, you know, like are people actually citing my software in the research that they're doing? And maybe I'm trying to like think maybe we abstract a little bit, at least to start. Yeah, and here's something that literally just appeared as I was, um, was listening to you. Um, there's this group on metadata for preprints. Um, that may be another piece of, you know, I don't know what, how much of this OSF already does and what the crossover is, but. No, I think preprints are really important too, because so, um, so there's the published journal article, which from, from concept to publication as we know can take five five years and so um preprints really became pretty critical during covid because in, a, in the medical community waiting for a paper to be published in a journal as having scientific impact it was just too long like the cycle was just too long and so preprints serve as a way to get that scientific information out to a community quite a bit faster. It's just more timely than, than oftentimes journal articles are. And so tracking, so I don't know if site as tracks software, in, site as is a piece of software that tracks software citations in articles. And I don't know if they track it in preprints, but that's, I think preprints are a good point. If you hear that, my son is dying in the background, I think. Yes, it sounds like it. <laughs> I mean, are there other ways that people can think of that, um, you know, software? software falling under the FAIR principles. So FAIR is a, there's FAIR for research software, which is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yep, and so some measure by which a piece of software is findable, some measure by which, or is determined as findable, or can be determined as findable, some measure by which it's considered interoperable and so on and so forth. So I mean, maybe I'm thinking these, what I have here, something like repository software activity could be a measure. And it's not like this is super not a definitive measure at all. It might be helpful at RIT, but it might not be helpful here at UNO. You know what I mean? Like the yeah, that, no, it's it's a that. placeholder for what might be 10 things or might turn yeah. out to be the right name, but it's too early to tell. Yep. And then software citations could be another one as found in journals and preprints. <laughs> if you could get that data, that would be fantastic. 
like my piece of software has been cited a hundred thousand times. Um, and then the software itself as being, as kind of adhering to fair principles. Maybe this is a good place to start. Did you, do we have a place where we can jot down these ideas? How the fair principles could lead to some metrics here? Um, like just in, like ideas from specifically to fair. I do. I can go track those down if that's what you're asking. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking we were just talking about how findable, how we can operationalize that with metrics. So yeah, I will, I will. Yep. If, I, if I'm thinking like uh, findable as a separate category for developing metrics, accessible as a separate category for developing metrics, this is what you're trying to figure. I don't know what it means. So the highest level could simply be we have three metrics that help. Like I'm just trying to like get the again break the ice on metrics that would help in this domain. And the three metrics would be those listed there: repository software activity, software citations, and adherence to fair principles. Like, and it if down the road it made sense to make a new metric that is simply the findability then great. If it makes sense to make a new metric that's just about interoperability, that's also great. But some, the software authors are attentive to, to the FAIR principles. And so Georg, I will go track that stuff down. So how, and, and, and how much of it is is the software authors and how much of it is working with people like GitHub and GitLab to build that into what they do? Yeah, sure. I mean, the sourcing of that could come from a variety of different places. Totally okay. Yeah, I'm adding, I'm adding the thoughts here to how we can, you know, if we take this as a metric, how we would go about collecting that kind of data or findable. I heard you say cited in other words. I was also thinking blog post published. Maybe there are some keywords that make it show up in Google search, not specific to the name of the, the project, but if it's, it is in a space, solves a specific problem, someone types in, how do I solve this, that that software shows up. That's also findability. Agreed, thank you. Should I pause the recording or do we want to keep it going? Are you suggesting it's not fun to watch the scrolling screen? I mean, it would be helpful, I guess, if someone's watching, but it's just quiet. Matt, you're muted. Uh, Matt, we cannot hear you. You are muted. Oh. I just said, hello, watchers of the YouTube video. You can <laughs> see me browse the web. So I'm sorry if I was talking. So Georg, these are your points. This is to your point here. Maybe some, some guides to what can constitute the particular components around FAIR.
I'm not saying we read all these, but I think you can get the general idea. You know what I mean? So these are some of the bars that, that we could use in that highest level fair. Like we could actually just point people yeah. to this page and say, here, <laughs> if you're, you should be attending to some of these things. We just had this talk in the DEI meeting when we were talking about demographics. Like we don't need to reinvent a lot of the things that people have already published. And so, yeah. okay. So maybe the idea would be like, we should start with one metric and start working on it and see how it evolves and brings others at the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would be happy to start on the fair metric. Okay. Just because, not just because, but also because I'm working with folks in the fair project. And I think we could get some feedback from them as well, just as to how we present such a metric. So maybe I'll then add a line to the metric sheet and start a new document on the fair metric. Yeah, that'd be great. Eric, did okay. you see that when I was shown on the screen? The table? Yeah. Yeah, I opened it just as I. Okay. Is that, is that sort of what you were asking for? Like just some guidance as to what FAIR could be? I think that is, that is helpful. And then it, looking through the table, they're more aspirational. Like this is what the outcome should be. And then what I was looking for is how do we give guidance on how do you answer this? So if reusable is software is which we described with a plurality of accurate and relevant attributes, how do you actually demonstrate that? your software meets this criteria. Gotcha, okay. Or if we, for F4, for findable for software is registered or indexed in a searchable resource, that's where it's, it shows up when you do Google search. It's part of a well-known software forge like GitHub or GitLab. I think that's fair. I think not to be colloquial there, fair, fair. But um, like some are considerably more applied, like what to your point. And then others, like I saw, I, you're right. I did see one inaccessible, like adheres to community standards. Like I, <laughs> whatever that might mean. <laughs> okay. Well, in open source, we can, we can then say, well, part of it is you have a code of conduct. You have a good readme, a good contributing doc. There are some community standards. Okay, that's good. So I'm. I, what I'll propose is I'll make a highest level, just singular, fair metric, and then uh, you can be broken down, and we can do that. I have created a metric template for the fair metric. Uh, so we we can go ahead and start adding to this. All right, I'll put that as an action item for me. Okay. We'll back in two weeks. Okay. So should we update the, I'll update the spreadsheet. I have added the same to the spreadsheet too. So okay. uh, yes, I just have to paste the link. Okay. So. so maybe then in the remaining time, we have one metric which uh, we completed a little bit. Maybe we take a look at it now or what, Everyone suggests. Okay. 
that is uh, open source project impact, previously RPT metric. What are you asking us to take a look at? Uh, so, uh, yeah, the I'm RPT asking. metric. That was RPT started. metric that we, we developed, it's like almost uh, maybe I would say 80% done. We just take a look and finalize it. Now I think you can pause the recording, Elizabeth. 